In this tutorial, I'll show you two examples on how to calculate the vapor pressure of a two-component solution. Question 1 reads, a solution contains 3.95 grams of carbon disulfide and 2.43 grams of acetone. The vapor pressure of 35 degrees Celsius of pure carbon disulfide and pure acetone are 515 torr and 332 torr respectively. Assuming ideal behavior, calculate the vapor pressures of each of the components and the total vapor pressure above the solution. To do this problem successfully, we'll need to use Raoult's law to calculate the partial pressures of each component. Raoult's law requires that we find the mole fraction of the two components separately. Then use the mole fractions found for each chemical along with the pressures given in the question to find their partial pressures. Once we find these pressures, we sum them up to get the total. Now if that's confusing to you, let's begin by finding out the moles of carbon disulfide and acetone individually. That will require the molar mass of both of these. Beginning with carbon disulfide, we have one atom of carbon, which is 12.01 grams per mole, plus the molar mass of sulfur, which is 32.06. And these can be retrieved from your periodic table. We'll multiply this number by two because there are two atoms. So grams per mole times two. Let's go ahead and do that quickly. 12.01 plus 32.06 times two gives us 76.13. 76.13 grams per mole. I'll flip this ratio where I have the moles at the top and I'll indicate that with these arrows. So I have one mole at the top and 76.13 grams. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to find the moles of carbon disulfide. And that's done by multiplying this number by its mass, which was given in the question as 3.95 grams. This unit and this unit will cancel out, giving us only moles. Let's use our calculator again. 3.95 divided by the number that we just found. And we get 0.05188. And that's the amount of moles of carbon disulfide. We have to repeat this for acetone. And rather than showing you all the work, I'm going to fast forward and just give you the number of moles of acetone. So that's the molar mass of acetone. I'll reciprocate this as I did with the previous number. One mole per 58.08 grams. And I'll multiply it by its mass of 2.43 grams. This and this cancel out. Let's use our calculator. 2.43 divided by 58.08. And the moles are 0 0.0418. As mentioned before, I'll use the moles to obtain the mole fraction of each of these components. So starting with carbon disulfide, the formula for the mole fraction represented by this X symbol, CS2 is equal to the number of moles, which we found to be 0 0.05188 moles, over this number again plus that. Let's calculate this. 0 0.0518 divided by 0 0.0518 plus the previous number that we had calculated, which was that. And we end up with the mole fraction of CS2 which is 0 0.55318. And it is a unitless number because the mole units will cancel out. To get the mole fraction of acetone, we can do this process all over again. But rather than that, we can subtract. So I'll write down the mole fraction of acetone is equal to 1 minus what we found, 0 0.55318 giving us 0 0.4468, 0 0.4468. Let me highlight these. And now I can use Raoult's law. If you recall, Raoult's law is the following, where the pressure is equal to the mole fraction. I'll write down the pressure of CS2 is equal to the mole fraction. Multiply 2. The pressure for CS2 is 5. 1, 5, and I can find the partial pressure of acetone the same way, where I take 0 0.4468 and multiply it to a pressure of 332. And those are both in Tor. 
Once we find these partial pressures, we add them up and we get the total. 0 0.55318 times 515, 284.88. Let's keep that in our calculator. So I'll write down plus to 0 0.4468 times 332. And we get a total pressure of 433.22. 433.22, considering significant figures, we have 3, 3, 3, and 3, and over here is 2, but that's an exact number, so we don't care about it. We should stop writing after this 3, so these are discarded. Our final answer is 433 Tor. That's the answer to question number 1. If you'd like to see the solution to question number 2, make sure you watch part 2 of this series, and we'll see you soon.